Hey guys, in this RedGamingTech.com video, um, I'm going to be talking to you about latest news on Xbox 720 and possibly PS4 that says it's going to be featuring at least 8 gigabytes of memory. This is sparked, at least of rumors, by Crytek CEO, Savat Yerily. I'm assuming I pronounced that wrong, probably not. Anyway, I'll read out the extract of information, which you guys can uh, summarize this from. Anyway, memory is the single most important thing I've always going to be underbalanced. I've never seen a console where memory was the right balance. Xbox 360 underbalanced. PlayStation 3 underbalanced. Simply because memory is the most expensive part. Hence, I wish there was a cheaper uh, ways of doing memory so that memory doesn't become an issue anymore. He added, and this is the important part, if they find ways to cheapen the cost to a degree, they could triple or quadruple their memory and just say, hey, we're going to have 32 gigs of memory, that would be quite amazing because memory can do so many more techniques and tricks. Now, if you'll reanalyze that statement where he says, hey, they're going to quadruple or triple the memory, that would obviously say 4 times 8 is 32. So it's a good indication that the development kits that are running around at the moment are actually with 8 gigs of RAM. Also, it's worth noting that last year, Crytek's R&D principal graphics engineer said he really liked to see next generation consoles feature a minimum of 8 gigabytes of memory. Indeed, the same person argued, my finger pointing at Microsoft slash Sony would be memory side. It's way too low and the biggest crippling factor from a visual perspective off quote and this is actually something i've been saying in a number of my own videos i actually was saying just in the last uh xbox 3720 roundup that i released just a day or two ago that i actually think that xbox 360 is still a reasonable machine on paper it's got um free it's got a tri-core processor which runs at 3.2 gigahertz it's got a reasonable gpu it's not great but hey and it's also got you know a reasonable specification in terms of everything else the problem is well with the xbox 360 two things first of all there's no hard drive as standard um blu-ray as well is a bit of a problem as well if you really want me to get technical but the biggest crippling factor is just the lack of ram and as i've mentioned in that video and i mentioned in this one as well um and then the danger of harping on a little bit i've said before even when the system was being released way back in 2005 and bear in mind i was a huge fan of the system when it was first released and i thought to myself hmm i really like the rest of this stuff but what's concerning me with this system is they're saying that they're going to be putting out 720p content. This is actually before the dashboard update, which basically allowed, of course, games to be upscaled to 1080p. And I thought to myself, hmm, <clears throat> you guys are going to be having all of this content on 512 megabytes of RAM. Uh, I've always said this numerous times, and I'm sure anyone who's into the console wars will probably know this anyway. But as you know, as you guys may know, that basically the Xbox 360 has 512 megabytes, which is unified memory, um, which is obviously shared between the graphics card and the CPU. Whereas the PS3 goes 256 divided fairly between both um you know was 256 for the memory uh sorry 256 for the gpu 256 for the cpu um i'm not going to say which technique's actually right um most people do prefer the 360 and by people i mean obviously developers who are the ones that count if what they are saying is true um and it or should i say if what the rumors are true and the systems actually do have eight gigs it would mean a lot for console development um one of the big issues for development of games is actually lack of ram and indeed i don't know if you guys were a member of the gaming community back in the days of playstation 1 but the ps1 versions of street fighters in other 2d games and even some of the 3d titles were actually irritating for developers to release um if you guys remember X-Men vs. Street Fighter for, say, the PlayStation 1, you couldn't actually tag between characters. So let's say, for example, you had, I don't know, 
Wolverine and, I don't know, Ryu on a team. You can actually tag between those two characters, whereas you could on the, say, the Sega Saturn version, because that featured a 4 megabyte RAM card that you actually slotted into the Saturn, which gave the Saturn 6.5 MB. Um, and, of course, the arcade version. You just couldn't switch between them because the PlayStation uh, just didn't have the RAM. I'm not sure if there was a way of doing it with a cheat card if you're both using the same team. I heard there was, but I never owned X-Men vs. Street Fighter on the on the PlayStation. But basically what I'm saying to you is even the uh, other titles that didn't suffer so badly, such as, say, Street Fighter, Alpha 2 was a great example of this. The loading times for the PlayStation vs. were actually pretty horrendous. Uh... And indeed, I played around a friend's house on the Alpha 2 version for the PlayStation, and I thought, wow, this is loading so slowly compared to my Saturn version. That's not to say, of course, the Saturn was perfect. By any stretch of the imagination, it had some issues with 3D being far more difficult. But in general terms, uh, memory has been a, a hindrance, actually, for especially for the CD-based systems. Um, obviously, N64 had a RAM pack that you could install, which was available for titles like, say, Perfect Dark, which was pretty awesome. But for, you know, the PlayStation, PlayStation 2, not quite so much, um, at least to begin with. But even the Dreamcast only had 16 megs. So, yeah, obviously, with the Dreamcast, one of the primary reasons, even though it died... Um, in terms of actually running homebrew software, 16 megs was actually the issue, but I suppose that wasn't really what Sega were planning on you guys doing anyway. Anyway, I'm kind of getting a bit off topic. My general point being that if it's actually true and we're going to be seeing 8 gigs of RAM, that would be good. I think that would be enough for now. Um, I would actually almost like to see a continuation of where you can upgrade the system's RAM if necessary. But I realise that would probably lead to some difficulty down the road. I'm not quite sure if people would actually want that. Um, I don't know. Personally, I would have no issue with it. But I know some people may. Uh, how they could possibly do that would be either the game doesn't simply run. Or it goes into, say, hey, you know what? You can't run either this level or you're going to be having crappy resolution textures. That could be one way to do it. Anyway, um, I'm just going to idle speculation at this point, so I think that's about going to do it for this particular video. So let me know what you guys think, uh, especially if you're a developer or an indie developer, that would be pretty cool. So anyway, take care of yourselves guys, bye for now. If you could comment on your thoughts and leave a subscription or something like that, that would be pretty damn awesome. Bye for now.